Hey guys, Turk here. Hope you're having a great day. We're still working on that Intel 10th gen processor review. We've actually got it inside of our test bench right now, but we've got something more important to talk about today, and that is airflow. Do you ever regret not spending the right amount of money on a case? I sure do. We've got the Fantex P400 case here. Really nice case. I've loved it a lot, but I've noticed it gets really toasty when we're running some heavy workloads. So today we're going to show you how to spend a couple extra bucks, maybe modify your case a little bit to potentially drop your temperatures. So stick around. It's going to get a little chilly. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. We are going to be doing kind of a product review slash build selection guide, but we're also going to be talking about a principle that's really important when it comes to building your own PCs, and that is case airflow. Like I said in the intro, we're rocking the Fantex P400 case. We've run it in our budget PC, our streaming PC, and a whole bunch of different scenarios, and it just gets really, really hot, especially when you're using a high power processor like the Threadripper 1950, or even running the Intel 10th Gen 10700K. Uh, right now we're running the Fractal Design S36 360 millimeter AIO. It's a really good cooler. I've used it for reviews for Threadripper for the past three or four years, and I've just been really pleased with its, with its performance. But I've noticed in this particular configuration, it gets really, really hot, and that is because the airflow. If you look at the front panel here of our, pan, our Fantex P400, there are no air vents on the front or the sides. We should be showing some B-roll. Uh, but down at the bottom, there, there's like this little bitty grill and there's little bitty vents. Uh, it's not conducive to airflow, and that's going to end up choking out our, re our radiator, and that's going to give us bad cooling performance. So I did get a notification from Fantex. They are selling a new unit called the P400A mesh front panel. They've heard a lot of the critiques from the industry as well as their, their customers, and they have replaced the front panel's flat sides with a really gorgeous-looking mesh grille. Uh, it's the same form factor. It plugs straight into the same original holds, and honestly, for 20 bucks, it is a no-brainer if you've picked up this case in the past, and I do highly recommend getting this upgrade. Um, if you're getting the P400 straight out of the box, you will notice that uh, but at the top, they actually don't have vents on the top or on the bottom. So keep that in mind. You're only getting the front mesh holes in the front. But, you know, I'm Turk. I do things a little bit differently. So we went ahead and did a little case mod uh, after the fact. And we went ahead and put the original P400 white trim as well as the LED plexiglass down at the bottom. Makes it look really nice, especially when you got the lights down low and the LEDs are showing. Looks really good. Uh, again, installation's a breeze. It all it has all the original mounting hardware, all the original uh, mounting locations. So you literally pop the old one off and plop the new one in. Bada bing, bada boom. You see instant relief from your poor airflow hardships. If you guys know me, I like to back up my claims with data. So today we're going to be testing three different hardware configurations. The first one's going to be just the stock configuration with the closed off front panel. That's going to be our worst case airflow scenario. And then we're going to go straight to the best case. We're going to remove the front panel and see what optimal airflow looks like for our system. And lastly, we're going to test out that brand new mesh front panel. And we're just going to kind of see where it lands in terms of performance. As for benchmarks, we're going to be running a variety of different test cases, all the way from the idle use case up to, you know, a GPU crushing gaming benchmark. So let's hop on into those charts. Starting us off tonight is going to be our CPU workloads. And I kind of consider the idle test case to be a CPU benchmark because the CPU is doing activity in the background, you know, managing tasks and different operating system things. And what we see here is that the mesh front panel, as well as the open air front panel, are running right around 44 degrees Celsius. But oh man, the closed front panel is like five degrees hotter, which I find kind of crazy. And it doesn't get any better. When we ramp up to a light to medium test case with the Ida 64 CPU workload, rather, the closed front panel is at 69 degrees Celsius, and that's a nine degree difference compared to the open air. And I'm really kind of happy to see that that mesh front panel is only two degrees warmer than the open front panel. 
Uh, going into the FPU based workload, that's kind of more of your X264 encoding as well as any kind of uh, rendering tasks you do with your CPU. I'm still shocked. The, the mesh front panel is only three degrees warmer than the open air test bench. But oh man, when, you, when you're pushing this 10700K to the max with that closed off front panel, you are at 80 degrees Celsius. There's not a lot of thermal headroom there if you're going to be overclocking. And you could potentially be losing some boost clocks because of that. So for gaming benchmarks today, we're going to be running Ashes of the Singularity as our CPU-based benchmark. And then we're going to run Red Dead Redemption 2 as our GPU benchmark. And we're going to be running these two different bookends in order to get a range of performance that we could see uh, based on the different airflow that we're going to be pumping through the system. If you're wanting to see how the 10700K works on some of these other games, make sure y'all hit the subscribe button on the channel. I have been running a lot more games in this particular setup, so keep your eyes peeled for those performance numbers. Uh, but let's take a look at airflow and how it impacts these different gaming results. So I think the the easier one to explain here is Ashes of the Singularity. We do see the similar trends as the Ida64 results where the mesh front panel kind of lands between the open air and the closed off front panel. But we do observe that the temperature is the temperature delta is actually a little bit warmer than with the FPU. So it just goes to show you that sometimes the tests don't pan out the exact same way you were thinking they were going to pan out. And that proves true even with... Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. We actually see the mesh front panel perform worse uh, than the closed off front panel. I honestly don't know why that's the case. It's only two degrees Celsius, which isn't that big of a issue, you know, but it could be that the lower half of our case is just not getting as good of airflow as we hoped. Um, I don't know, but obviously the front, the open front panel is clearly the winner here you know, 57 degrees versus 67, that's a 10 degree increase, which is pretty hot. So overall, I think the mesh front panel performs more akin to the open air setup, but you know, there are some instances where it's not as good, but it's still clearly better than the closed off front panel. So let's take all this data and uh, make some conclusions. So there's three big takeaways from this experience. And to speak specifically, the Fantex P400A, it is a great case to build in and it looks really good, but it is not a good thermal performer. You know, it's, I think a lot of YouTubers have mentioned that it's not good. And luckily Fantex has responded and they provide a kit that's really easy to install, or you can just buy the P400A outright. You know, I think overall I'm about 80 bucks into this case and that's right around a pretty decent price for a case. So with the mesh front panel, this case is performing as I would expect from a case. Uh, all of my components are giving me the the performance I'm desiring. So two thumbs up. I love the thing. And I highly recommend if you've got the P400, pick up the option when it's in stock. And that actually goes into our second takeaway, and that's just case selection in general. You're building a new computer or planning on upgrading and you're just running out of money. You know, don't forget about your case. I know it's not the sexiest thing to buy, but if you're struggling and you need to spend that extra $20 to get that performance you really wanted, don't don't overlook it. If you've got any questions or you need recommendations, head on over to our Discord. We'd love to talk to you about it. And, you know, just keep in mind, you know, when you've got two products next to each other, look for details that are specific to your build. You know, maybe aesthetics is really important. You don't care about airflow. Well, then I just wasted however many minutes of your time. But if you are worried about your performance, um, don't hesitate to look for those details and make your choices accordingly. Uh, but that leads to option number three, modify. If you've bought this thing, you better modify this thing. Uh, just like what we did, we took the original bottom and the top out of our original case and we put it in our new modification and it's looking really snazzy. So be creative. Even heck, what before this fan grill even came out, I was gonna just cut slits in here uh, make a cool little design or something. Modding your computer is definitely going to enhance how much you like it, and it also can help you with your performance needs. So that's what I've taken away from this experience. Let me know what you guys think about airflow in general. And man, just I've had a good time. If y'all are looking for that 10700K review, I promise it's coming. I think we're running at 5.2 gigahertz at the moment. Uh, spoiler alert, it's awesome. Uh, so yeah, just make sure you hit the bell icon. It's going to be coming in about a week or so. 
uh, I got to do a little bit more testing, but thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day. We'll catch you in the next one. Take care.